Hello, my name's Fraser Chadburn, a modeling specialist with more than 11 years of experience with the Rational Rhapsody tool, including seven and a half years at IBM Nutella Logic as a technical consultant. I now provide worldwide training in Rhapsody and MBSE, including delivery of official IBM software and systems training for global training partners, as well as my own training consultancy and tool customization. In this video, I'll take you through some of the enhancements I've been working on for the third generation of the SysML Helper Profile, a profile I originally developed to support my Rhapsody training, but which has evolved with my work with different companies rolling out Rhapsody for the first time. The goal of the SysML Helper Profile is to make MBSE with Rhapsody simple. In this third generation of the profile, I'm looking to make it even smoother. Creating the initial requirements analysis package structure requires only a couple of clicks. In the box here, it's asking me to name the package. I'm going to call this feature A. Let's imagine it represents a set of use cases that relate to a new feature for an existing system that we want to work on. A use case diagram has been created programmatically based on the list of actors in the property in the profile, and hence is customizable. If we look in the browser, we can see that the helper profile created three different types of packages. The main package is the use cases package, where we can create use case diagrams with use cases for a feature. But there's also an actors package for shared actors and a requirements package where we want requirements to go. The new profile has no dependency on a fixed root structure, so this opens it up to be used more flexibly in existing projects. I've tailored Rapsi so that the type of package is clear from its icon and category name, and ordering puts things where they're wanted. Each of these packages plays a clear role, and the right-click menus have been simplified accordingly. We're not going to use any IBDs or BDDs in the use case model, so I've removed and simplified the right-click menu here. If all the packages are built with a consistent and appropriate modeling construct for their role, then a measure of uniformity will permeate through our models, making them easier to build, navigate, and review. This leads to a more consistent, simplified usage. The use case diagram is also customized and includes a process note given advice. As with the generation two profile, the double click will create a nested activity diagram pre-populated with a template that conveys consistency and gets people working straight away. This activity diagram is tailored to focus on textual use case steps with a simplified drawing toolbar that means that users can easily access the tools they needed for their job and they're not left pondering some of the more eclectic activity diagram tools. The generation three profile includes a new auto flow feature for requirements. If I create requirements, they will flow automatically into the requirements package based on dependencies between them. Obviously a system will be able to perform multiple use cases and multiple features. We might have one user working on new use cases for a new feature in version one, while another user works on use cases for a different feature in version two. We can create any number of use case packages. We're using the use case package here to group use cases into features or functions that might constitute marketable commodities. We can run this command multiple times in the same project, giving a unique name to each package. When I create the use cases package, the profile is intelligent enough to know that I already have an actors package and hence will prompt me to make use of the actors in it. We could choose also whether to create a separate requirements package or not. We now have two use case packages representing different features. However, they're in the same model and could share the same actors. Importantly, over time, you will need the flexibility to refactor your use case model to include multiple features or requirement sets but where different use case models might be initially built by different users. As I'm probably going to deploy this with Rhapsody Model Manager, the helper is experienced enough to know that by selecting the store in separate directory on the root package here, we will make the units easier to find on the file system later. With the generation three of the profile, I've also switched to using properties. The use of Rhapsody properties replaces the previous profile's use of tags under root packages with fixed names. This makes it simpler to configure and maintain, and more consistent with other profiles such as the SE Toolkit. You'll notice that I've also added a perspective to the properties pane so that you can view the properties for the profile. 
The defaults here are drawn from a property file in the profile folder, so it can easily be changed. If I tick Enable Gateway Types, for example, then I can create a stereotype requirements package when I create the structure. The goal here is to get the best balance between integration and isolation. One of the benefits of bringing users into the same project is to improve collaboration, especially as Rapti Model Manager brings the capability to view Rapti projects via the web client. Requirement stereotypes work really well if we apply a format to the stereotype. We can do this by right-clicking on the stereotype to access its format menu. We can then say that when this stereotype is applied to requirement, we want Rapsi to color it a specific color like green. We can now see that requirements with this stereotype applied are different from other requirements in the project. This gives the reader a visual cue that the requirement is related to a different specification or collection. The helper also includes a start link and end link command that is intelligent enough to know which type of requirement we want to create based on the elements we've selected. Again, this is based on property settings in the profile. It can even populate them as it knows they're on the diagram. The final thing to note is that as well as automatically creating the structure, the helper is automatically maintaining a package diagram for the project. Here we can see that all the feature packages are sharing the same actors package. With my automation help, this can be one of a number of automatically maintained diagrams in the project. This concludes the demo for now. It's really just a glimpse of the stuff I've been working on to make the process of using and deploying Rapsi to a large team that little bit simpler. I've just shown the requirement analysis method helpers, one of three stepping stones to achieving a working white box architecture trace to system requirements. In today's world, many things are automated. Like Rapsi's built-in Harmony SE toolkit, the SysML helper brings the idea of automation to SysML modeling tasks. You want your team to be doing fun and creative tasks in a consistent way as part of a big team in a shared model without stepping on each other's toes. This requires more than installing a tool. You need a combination of modeling language, tools, process, and people to come together. You essentially need a system. The more automation you can get into that system, the faster it will run, the better it will scale, and the more consistent and predictable its output will be. Consistency also shows that you're meeting your process, which may be important for certification and quality assurance reasons. Some of the methods are based heavily on IBM's Harmony process, but use an open source Rapsd profile, meaning that we have the option to tailor it to fit your organization and business goals. I can offer both consultancy and training to take these ideas and make them work for your organization, meaning less time spent on reinventing the wheel and increasing your chance of achieving success earlier in your adoption lifecycle. If you want to explore any of these ideas, then feel free to look at my mbsetraining.com website or fire me an email.